Hello. So let me let me put out a disclaimer here. I am not an economist. I'm talking about the economy today. Um, more specifically, the stock market. Um, I, I the, the title here, what I'm giving as a title here, it's basically because there are so many things about the economy we could talk about that, you know, I have to specify. Um, I'm not specifically thinking of starting a series on the economy, but I know in the future I'm probably going to be talking about the economy again at some point. So I'm calling this, you know, economics dash the stock market. Just because, like I said, I'm going to probably talk about some other aspect of the economy at some other point. So for most of my adult life, people talk about the economy. There is always someone who stepped forward and said, well, look how great the stock market's doing. People doing that now. Now, the stock market is not a good indication of the economy. How do we know this? Because there was this thing called the crash of 1929, which showed us that it wasn't a good thing. See, throughout the 20s, the stock market was going up almost steadily. I mean, there, there are ups and downs, but the downs were fairly mu minor compared to the ups. And so it went up, you know, the uh, Dow Jones went up almost 200 points in a decade. And then we reached October 1929, and things turned around. Now, the interesting thing is, if you look at a graph of the, uh, which you can find online, of the stock market, or the Dow Jones, you'll see 1929 comes, it drops back to where it was about two years earlier. Well, actually, not even two years. Early 1928, according to the graph I found. So there was a drop October 1929, but it wasn't that huge, all things considered. To the people who had just bought into it, it was huge. But to people who had you know, long-term investors, it was like, we lost money, but you know, if, if, you'd, if you'd been in the market for more than two years, you lost money if you hadn't cashed in on your stocks, but you still had more than you invested in originally. So the crash wasn't, you know, the, the, the October 29 crash, it was a large crash to new people, but it wasn't that big compared to long-term for long-term investors. Market turned around, started going up again, got about to where it was in early 1928. Or actually, no, early 1929. So it recovered about 100 points over the next year. And then the big crash came, and there was a gradual descent for the next two years, you know, going from 1930 down to about 1932. It dropped down you know, way below 19, you know, way, way below where it had been a decade ago. So that, that was the real crash there. Now, in the meantime, the Great Depression had already started. So if we, we jump back, we look at it, you know, we had this crash in 29, starts a depression, but stocks start going up again. So while we were in a depression, stocks were going up. And it wasn't until a couple years later that stocks started to actually reflect the economy. Now we had, you know, similar thing happen with um, other markets, you know, the real estate market, similar thing happens. We had people Here's an idea. Here's a rundown house. Let's buy it, fix it up, sell it as a profit. And that was actually a good idea. Great idea, actually. So people did this. 
Then other people saw this, oh, we can make money doing this. Bought a house. Didn't need renovations, but let's just put renovations in on a Disney way so we can mark up the price. So the value of the house didn't really increase that much. I mean, I'll, so originally, the first people who did this, like I said, buy a rundown house, fix it up. So you're adding value to the house. So I got the price I paid for it, the price I invested fixing it up, and I'll throw in maybe, I don't know, five to $10,000 extra on my cost. That way I make a profit. So really, we've really inflated the market by that last bit that I added in. Because I did add value to the house, so it is more valuable. You know, the, the only inflation I did, the, the only phony inflation I did, if you want to call it that, is my profit margin, which you know depends on. Some people got very greedy. Some people got moderate. You know, only moderate. You know, nothing wrong with making a profit. Then, like I said, you got other people who jumped in on it, and it's like, let's take a house that really doesn't need renovations. Let's do a bunch of renovations on it anyway. Justify driving the price up. And so they aren't really adding to the value of the house. All they're doing, it's a parallel move, basically. The house started off this way. We we decided we don't, you know, the house was built for, three, for you know, a family with three kids. We're going to tear down a bedroom, expand the living room. Now it's a house for two kids. Or something similar to that. You know. We, are, we aren't really adding to the value of the house. We're just making a parallel change to it. But we're still going to mark up the value when we sell it. So we got the value of the house. We got the money we put in renovating it, which really didn't add to it. All we, all we, like, all we did was make a parallel change to it. So it's, it's still worth, you know, if, if we wanted to look property to property, how, home value to home value, we didn't really add to it. We just changed the way it looked. And then, just for the fun of it, we're going to add on our own extra. So we're driving up the uh, home val home market, real estate market value, whatever. And then you got another group of people who just got the idea, hey, people are buying homes and selling them at a profit. And they started trying to do this. You know, no renovations, nothing. It's just, up. Oh, here's a piece of land. We'll buy it. Hold on to it for a year. Make no improvements on it. Hope that the price of the land goes up and then sell it again. And a bunch of people started doing this. That drove it up. Then, of course, you had Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac jump in on it. And, you know, we got to start giving home loans to people who can't pay them back and stuff like that. And so back about 10 years ago, we had the real estate market crashed. And it's. Where is it now? It's about back where it was, or it's it's headed back to where it was now, because people are doing the same thing over again. Land speculation, basically. Yeah, the people who are actually fixing up old houses and making improving them, I have no problem with. The people, not you know, making parallel changes and trying to make these big increases, or just holding on to land and hoping the price goes up, you know, speculating in the land. Them I have a problem with. And that, you know, go, getting back to the stock market, you know, there was one crazy woman back in 19 or 2016, I believe, who claimed that uh, corporations were responsible for the real estate crash, even though just about every real estate or just about every econo economist in the world said, no, no, this was Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac putting loans to people who shouldn't be getting loans. But I digress there. So anyway, back to the stock market. Yeah, I mentioned speculation. There are two kinds of stock, uh, two kinds of markets, speculative and dividend. Dividend is end of the year or end of the quarter, however the company does it. They look at their income. They take what they earned, basically. Uh, here's what we have to pay our workers with. Here's for any expansion we want to do, all, all, all our costs. 
and any leftover is profit, and we divide that up amongst our uh, investors. And so you get a dividend check. And you know, dividend is your share of the profits, basically. So we have dividend returned indexes and stuff like that. And that is basically um, calculating how much you will get from year per year from dividends from a stock. And on average, it takes about 50 years for you to get your money back from dividends today. Now, it depends on the stock. If I, if I get in on the next, you know, the, the, someone creates a pro computer program that's going to blow you know, windows out of the water and everyone's going to want this. If I could, if I can buy in on that early, you know, before it starts selling, before people see what it is, then you know, that's going to have huge dividend returns because this is, like, this is going to be the operating system that replaces Windows. Everyone's going to want a copy. So the, the people who invest early are going to get the benefits of those early sales. Other than that, though, like I said, on average, it takes about 50 years to get your money back from dividends. And if inflation keeps going up, then in 50 years, your money's not going to be worth as much as it was when you invested it. So the stock market in a dividend-based economy or a dividend-based market where people are buying because they know I'm going to get dividends from this, that's good. That, that, that is a good sign for the economy. But people aren't doing that. People are th buying with the intent of if the stock market keeps going up, then tomorrow I could sell this for 50% higher than I bought it. I don't know what the company does. I don't know what they make. I have no idea what their profit margin is. I'm just thinking the price of the, the, price of the stock itself is going to go up and I'm going to sell it to someone else who wants it. And... People doing this repeatedly just drive the stock up because some people get greedy. Again, um, that's that's the thing about speculation is you have to decide. Okay, the price has gone has gone up. Do I wait and see if it goes up more, or do I sell it now and fear that it might go down? I sell it now. That causes the price to go up again if enough people want it. So now I might think, oh, I better get back into this. And so speculative markets tend to be circular. You know, they, they drive themselves. My belief that this stock is going to be worth something causes me to want more of it. It causes other people to want more of it or causes people to buy it. And over time, you know, oh, Someone just bought it for 10% more than what this guy bought it for. It must be good. So how do I get it? Well, I got to pay him more than he bought, paid for it. Then someone else sees that and, oh, you know, this guy just sold his stock for a profit. It must be a good stock. I want to buy in on it. So he has to buy someone who's got it. So it, it's self-driving. The companies aren't making any more. You know, they're, they're, they're doing the same old, same old. It's just the investors are paying more over and over and over again to get the stock. And there's the problem. Dividend market, companies are doing well. You know, people want to buy the stocks because the companies are doing well and making, you know, the dividends are higher. Speculatives, I want to buy money because someone else paid more for it. And then someone wants to buy it from me because I paid more for it. And so it's basically the stock market, you know, currently it's a speculative market, it's not a dividend market, and so it is not as good as people think it is. Um, there are times when the stock market is a good indicator of the economy, like I said, dividend markets. But it's not, it isn't always. And so this constant, you know, I've been seeing for the past 20 to 30 years, people being like, you know, someone complains about the economy and someone's like, but look at the stock market. Well, no, the stock market is not an accurate reflection of the economy. It's a reflection of what people think the economy is like. But again, people, like I said, I, I, I openly admit it. I'm not an expert in economics. Most people aren't. 
And so people thinking, oh, this is good because the price is high, not, a net, not an accurate reflection of the economy. So just like I just wanted to say that, that the, the argument, look at the stock market, is not a good argument for a good economy like most people think. Uh, that's it, and have a nice day.